Welcome back to the channel, everybody. <clears throat> so today we're working on a gnome. This is going to be a, a, a robed gnome here with a, a nice red hat. And I'm going to do a series of gnomes, and this is going to be the first one in that series. So other gnomes will be more uh, detailed. We're going to have maybe one with the shield and uh, one with the staff. But today, just this robed gnome out of this block of wood here. We're starting with a piece of basswood that is six inches long, two inches by two inches. And like I said, I'm going to do a lot of gnomes here in the future, but uh, they're always going to be on this two by two uh, block, and I'm, probably a lot of them are going to be six inches. So you're going to see this size often. So I'm going to start with uh, just drawing a center line here. I'm going to carve this on the corner of this block, and a little circle there for where I want the, uh, the center to be. And then we're going to start drawing this fella out here. Now, a lot of this is going to be head. And you could leave the head and the, and the hat as wide as the block is, but then you wouldn't have enough room for shoulders. And so we want to make sure we put some room for shoulders. And so we're going to take a little bit out there on the left and right to give us some good shoulder height. And then uh, we'll put in the left arm like so, the right arm like so. And I'll put the bottom of that arm over here like this and coming down over here like that and coming down. And that's the general shape of what we're going for. And all of this will get carved off, but it does give us a general idea for where our first cuts are gonna be. The top of our hat is probably gonna fall around in this area. Now, of course, you can look at the overlay on the left and see exactly where it's gonna fall, but I'm uh, just giving a general idea here. And we're gonna try to put that hat in, uh, coming to a point along the front. But first, let's just jump in on the side here, start taking off of the left side of the hat here starting the shoulder sweeping cup sweeping cut up and out at the top just to get most of this off and then take a look at the front every now and then to make sure you're staying in line like that and we'll do the same thing on the right side sweeping cut in from the shoulder up just taking out a lot of wood right now getting those big chunks out as we can there we go and that's getting close to being where we want it. We'll take a little more off the top here and just get that as straight as we can. Now we're going to take off this back section back here and uh, get that quite a bit flatter. So we're going to take a lot of wood off here. Now I'm going to throw this out there right now here at the beginning. Um, if you enjoy these types of videos, if, you, if this content is worthwhile to you at all, please do me a favor. Like the video down below. Subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Um, it promotes the video to more viewers, and uh, it also gives me a, a nice feeling of satisfaction when I see that folks have liked it and commented and subscribed to the channel, so that really helps me out. All right, so now we're going to keep working on these shoulders here. We're going to do some stop cuts here to bring those shoulders in, coming down and then in from the outer shoulder, like so. We're going to do the same thing left and right side, and just take that stuff out to kind of square down to where we had drawn that line like that right there. And so we'll flatten this back out here. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Coming straight in and then straight down. Stop cuts to carve that corner in. And you can bring these shoulders up or down as you need to. I like to have the shoulders a little bit higher than I think I might need them because then I can take them down if I need to and just adjust them down. Cause you always remove more when you're carving. You can't add more. You can always remove subtractive art, right? So just straighten this out here on that side of the, the head as well. Like so. And take that little bit out too. There we go. So we got a good start there on the head. It's nice and tall. Um, the hat, and we'll take this off on the sides right here. So we're gonna flip this upside down. And it's the same thing. We're doing the underside of the arms, sweeping cuts going in and coming out at the bottom taking out the underside of those arms. I'm going to have the overlay pop up here on the left. Now, if you're new to the channel, that overlay on the left there, that is a picture of the finished carving. The carving we're working on right now, the one you see my knife going through, that is the carving that you see here. So you can see what we're doing here, what we're going for, right? That's the goal that we're going to end up at. So you can see what, the, what shape we're getting here comparatively. So like I said, we're going to do some cutting here. We're going to do the stop cut again to define the bottom of that elbow. And there's the bottom of the right elbow here. So I'm coming up to that and then in to cut that out. And just smoothing that out. So we have a smooth section here coming down from the bottom of that right elbow. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And uh, 
just cut in at that angle that we drew and then cut up to it in and then up to it smoothing that out to have that robe come straight up to that elbow and then like so compare that to the overlay you can see how it's looking and that's uh doing pretty well but next we can start taking off some of this weight here on the front of the carving right we don't need all of this on here we we'll take a bit of it off round out the front of that face a little bit take off that hard corner here in the front down here as well work our way down this is just general shaping right now flipping that around and work in this direction as well pay attention to the grain of your wood and that will tell you where to cut if it starts to split on you you might want to flip it around and cut from the other direction it's always something to keep in mind when you're carving that's going to come out just fine. So yeah, we want to make sure we get all, at some point during this carving, all of the saw marks carved off as well, on the front here and on the back, all around there. So, all right, so what we're going to do with the uh, hood is we're going to curve it around here at the top and then bring it in and back out. So it's kind of flopped over to the front of the head. And to start on that, we're going to start shaving off the side here and just adding some general shape to this gnome's hat here so we're going to take a little bit of wood off the left and right sides just to start thinning that out then we can start curving the back of that head around because we're going to be coming up and over the top having that hat flop over the top of the head a little bit so we're just going to take a lot of wood off here in the back and curve this around and it's that in grain where you start to realize how sharp or dull your knife is because it's harder to cut through That'll uh, let it shine and tell you whether or not you've stropped yet, right? Stropped yet? Time to find out. And uh, if you need to strop, stop, strop, get it done. Have that knife sharper. It is uh, a significantly easier carving experience when you're carving with a stropped knife. If you're not sure what to do, there's a video on the channel. You can watch that to learn about it and uh, get yourself taken care of. All right, so we got that mostly rounded off. We're gonna do some paring cuts now across the top there to remove the rest of the, those saw marks off the top of the head. And uh, if you notice, I'm keeping that left thumb, the right thumb down and out of the way as I do this, and that allows me to get some good grip on the wood using that left thumb to push the wood and using my fingers to pull the knife across there. And easy does it. Just knocking out some chunks here, getting rid of those saw marks. And if you've, if this is your first vi uh, video on the channel, those saw marks, you can't leave those behind because if you do, they take wood and or they take paint and stain differently than uh, the rest of the carving does. So we want to make sure we get them all off and gone so that uh, everything paints up properly and looks good. Okay, on the front of this here, we're going to put in that notch here underneath the tip of the hat. We're just gonna start carving that in with a good deep V cut here and just keep making it deeper as we go. It's a more sloping cut on the bottom and a sharper incline at the top because we wanna have it wider, more open at the bottom. And then we start doing a little to the left and a little to the right as we go in here to round it off, to add some angle to that hat. And then we'll start taking a little bit off the left and right side of the hat as well as we go through there. Now as we do that hat, I can see these shoulders, they're too high. We need to bring those down. The, the top of the hat's gonna be down here and the face is gonna be too low into the shoulders. So we're gonna need to correct that here in a moment or two. So we'll keep that in mind as we keep doing cuts here, V cuts along the sides of the hats. And like I said, you can do this hat with a flop either direction or no direction. You just have it come to a point if you wanted to. You don't have to have a flop over. You have it come up straight to a point and that's a good gnome hat too. This is just uh, something I like to do. Just have it flop in one direction or another. And flopping forward is kind of a neat look too. So taking out a little bit more wood here on the left and right sides of the hat. Just making that pointy end a little bit smaller. Bringing it out. And you don't have to have all these flat cuts in here. We'll take some time to smooth them out a little bit as we go. We're just removing chunks of wood right now trying to flush this guy out a little bit 
there. Take a hard corner off on the tops here and there. And uh, flatten that out to fix a little bit that chipped off on me. Take out a little bit right here. And he's coming along pretty good. A little bit more on this side of the hat. And turn your carving around as you're, as you're doing it. Rotate it. Find the best angle to carve from. Where can I bring this knife in from that's going to be most comfortable? That's going to keep me from getting injured. Be thinking about where your blade's going and where it's going to end up. And, uh, and we've, car we've cleaned up most of those cuts. It's looking a whole lot cleaner now. And that's a lot better. So round off that back a little bit more because I don't like how thick that is there. You can see the overlay, but when I'm carving this, I can't see the overlay at that point. But I know I'm going to be putting it up later in editing. So I don't know how far in I go or not, but I think that taking a bit more here is going to be beneficial to us. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do that as best I can. Get those chips out of the way. Now that head has uh, got that nice curve to it and got a nice little cut in there. We can thin this out some more by taking some more off the inside of that curve here. And maybe the same thing on the other side. Bringing it up here. More at an angle towards that flop so that it's not it's hard on the face. So we need to start defining where the face is going to be here in a moment. Right? So there we go. All right. Now we talked about those shoulders being a little bit too high. Let's go ahead and uh, draw where we're going to reduce those two. We're going to bring that down to here, I think. And this is why you draw it always with a little bit more than you need, because then you can remove it later, right? And so if we put the shoulders there, we can have the top of the hat here like that. And then we'll put our nose, maybe bottom of the nose right there. And uh, mustache come down from there. And that'll work out just fine. So we're going to, same thing we did earlier. We're going to cut into here and then cut down to it. And we'll get those shoulders in like we want them to be. It looks just fine. And that's why you leave plenty of extra wood. Like I said, so you've got the, the room to do that and adjust as needed. A lot of carvers are planning their carvings out immensely beforehand. They might carve three or four things and then you'll see them do a video on it, right? I don't like that. What I want to do is have this carving be done the first time with you while you're watching this because then you can see the planning process too, which is another skill that you're trying to learn. If you don't learn how to adapt to a carving, you're not gonna be able to do this on your own without me. And I want you to be able to do this on your own without me. I want you to develop that skill where you can look at a piece of wood and say, well, I made this mistake, but I can fix it because I planned ahead and I left these shoulders higher than I needed to. So I can bring them down and adjust how I want to, to make this come out right. Working on the nose here, we're going to put a big stop cut right there, rotating that a little bit, pushing that blade in nice and deep, and then cutting right up to it, and just get that nice and straight as much as you can, and just take out some wood here under the nose, provide a little depth to it, and uh, looking good, take out a little bit more, like so, do a couple cuts at once if you want to, then snap them loose and pull them out, and that's doing pretty good right there clean that up get that out of the way all right now we're gonna do some angled cuts here the left side here like a 45 degree angle off the side there and then cut up to it and we do the same thing for the other side of the nose the left nostril there 45 degree angle over nice and far and then we're gonna cut up to it making this kind of a sharp V for the nose right and the bottom edge of that V there, that's going to be where our nostrils are going to go. So I'm going to get a uh, gouge. And this here is a uh, number eight Swiss made file gouge. And it's a good deep one. And I'm just going to use it to create some nostrils. And you can do this with a knife. I'm going to show you with a gouge because you start seeing the ways you can use these other tools. I might encourage you to get them because they're fantastic and you'll really make use of them once you have it. So just putting two nostrils in there. And then I'm going to get a detail knife, I think, because I want to be able to have a second knife to do on this. Just clean that up a little bit. That's where the top of the hat's going to be right here. So I'm going to define that a little bit right now. 
while we're doing this nose. So we know where we're stopping the nose at right there. So that's where the top of the hat's going to be. So the uh, detail knife I'm going to get here is this flex cut one. You may see this in other videos. I, I often go back to this flex cut because that pointy blade here, that detail blade is really nice for things like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the nostrils here. I'm going to draw it out first. I'm going to put a little line here, a line there like a V cut. I'm going to cut out that section, which is going to get this nice nostril effect here. So we bring it over and down. Same for this side, over and down. And then we're going to cut out a little bit the top edge here and the bottom edge here. And we do the same thing on this side. It's like a little V kind of cut out there on the side. And uh, the upper portion there is going to wind up becoming part of our cheeks. As you'll see in a moment here. I'm going to take some more of that out. I want this to be a funky looking nose, right? A misshapen nose. Because he's not, uh, he's not a, he's not a good looking fella. He's got a funky looking nose. He's a weird looking old man, right? So we're going to take out a little part of our nostril came off there. That's okay. We're going to go ahead and fix that. It was then up the other side a little bit more. And having a funky nose was where we're going for anyways. It's going to be a little bit more funky, and that's fine. We're just going to fix it as we go, right? That's what I was talking about earlier. I want you to see how to fix things, right? If you see someone fixing stuff as they're carving, then you'll help learn that skill yourself so you can fix your carvings as you go as well. Rather than see everything planned, pre-planned, and decided beforehand, or just make perfect cuts, Seeing someone make judgments as they go, what do I do here? Because your carvings aren't going to go 100% like mine every time. And so you're going to need to correct. And what do we do to correct? We, we can only take away. But we take away a little bit like that and we gave him a funky nose. Now I'm going to use this. Actually, I'm going to use a different tool here. We'll use a different V tool. I do you guys. I mean, a smaller one. It's still number eight, but it's a two millimeter. A three, three millimeter number eight. Let's put some little channels right here, to the side of the nose, and cut those out. And then I'm going to smooth out that cheek there, so that cheek is lower on the left and right side of the nose, and we curve up to the nose. That little channel I'm making is that curve, and then I'll smooth it out with the knife on the lower plane of the cheek, and smooth it out with the knife on the side of the nose. Okay. So now we're going to draw the rest of the hat here around the back of the head. Like so, and start to define that, because that's going to determine where the rest of our body lands, like the beard as it comes down through here, like so, and then uh, those arms will go right into pockets, and we'll have a uh, nice trim, the robe coming straight down here and down the middle. Maybe we'll bring that trim all the way around the bottom of the carving. I've done something similar with with Santa's and I kind of like the way that trim looks like that. And we'll trim this guy out kind of like that. Give him like an old world style robe. Like he's a mage or a, or a traveling salesman. Who knows? All right. So we're making progress. Now let's go ahead and start uh, defining that hat. We're going to stop cut along the base of the hat and then carve up to it. That's all we're going to do all the way around the head here. Same thing. Now, not all my carvings uh, are going to be on YouTube. A lot of them I'm going to post on uh, Instagram or Facebook. I highly encourage you, if you're not following wood carvers on social media, to head over to Instagram, follow me, and then take a look at my posts as I do them, and you'll see a lot of wood carvers that are interacting with me. Because wood carvers interact with one another at an immense rate. I mean, we are constantly looking at each other's stuff, looking for new ideas, and uh, get involved in that. So follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, and uh, start taking a look at other people's work. And you'll be able to find a lot of them that are active right now by seeing who's liking and sharing stuff on my feed or on other woodcarvers' feeds. And you can start to get involved and see what's going on out there. So come on over. All right, just shaving a little bit off the uh, left and right shoulders there on the arms bringing that in and then take a look at the front of the carving to see how it lines up is it looking good and take a little bit more off here it's looking good a little bit more on this side the shoulder here to bring that in 
to match the other side. Get things lined up, make them more symmetrical. That we didn't have a lopsided shoulder. And now we'll put a, a big V cut here. I'm using the rough out knife here along the bottom edge of that beard. A big V cut here. We'll do the same thing on the other side and rotate your carving to find the best angle for this, right? If this is a good angle for you, fantastic. If it's not, rotate the carving again and find the right angle to where you feel like you can cut and not injure yourself, right? There we go. And then we'll do one along the bottom here square that beard off see now you can see a beard starting to take shape there huh starting to look like a good gnomish beard coming to a flat bottom like he's a lazy fella he's going to take that beard hold it in his hands and cut with scissors straight across to trim his beard up he's not going to go for the fancy stuff no no cutting straight across the bottom of his beard he's he's a simple simple gnome nothing complicated for him now, I've also had a lot to smooth out those lines, and I've got a lot of lines to smooth out around here, but uh, yeah, let's give a little more depth on that beard. Coming up to there and cutting that out. A little more depth on this side again, and on that. We still got a lot of saw marks to take off here in a little bit, but we're going to get to that. Just going to keep providing some depth to this beard here. Like I said, rotate, find the right angle to carve into however you want to. As long as you control that cut, you're not going to injure yourself. Don't press too hard. Make sure you got control over where the knife's going, where the knife blade's going to end up when it completes its journey. As long as that space that's going to end up is not inside of your thumb, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to bounce around a little bit, clean up some of these lines here smooth out some stuff in this hat. We got a lot of saw marks to get rid of. As I mentioned earlier, those saw marks will not take paint or stain the same way as uh, the spots of the wood that have been touched by a blade. So you don't want to leave those behind. You want to get them all off of there. The entire carving. And uh, we don't want any too hard lines. Some spots we want to have lines, those facets, those knife cuts, look really good once you start dry brushing. But, uh, we don't want them to be too sheer, right? So I'm taking those saw marks off the front here and smoothing out those hard lines around the bottom of this robe. Right like so. And I got another tool we can use for that too. I got a number three KCT gouge. Nice, wide, flat tool. I like using that for taking off saw marks too. And I'll show you how that works here. Get that bad boy out. And uh, it's good to pay attention to the grain here. So you want to carve with the grain, not against the grain. If you carve against the grain, it will start to, to chip up and get really rough really quickly, right? So like here, it's doing fair. Uh, it's doing all right. But uh, we're getting all that, all the saw marks off, nice, easy cuts. And it's a lot easier to do this. On this side here, you can see, okay, the grain's traveling a little bit different. So it's getting in a little hard. So on this section here, it might be best if we flip that gouge around and come from this direction. Now it's cutting a lot smoother, a lot easier. And we're not tearing the wood as much. That's fantastic. So keep that in mind. Think about the wood grain when you're carving and uh, which direction you need to carve from. But just smooth that out in the back here, round that off. Because that's the back of the robe. And we can worry about some, putting some, some fabric look to it later by using a smaller gouge. But... Take these saw marks off the front of this robe as well. I can tell right now I'm carving in the right direction for this because the grain is going smooth as I do this. Just pay attention to what your blade is doing, whatever cutting implement you're using. All right, now we got a bit of a hunchback going on here, so we're going to trim that up. Take care of that those back problems that he has. He's not going to be Quasimodo for us for long. We're going to take care of him all right that's gonna be the hairline here in the back bring that around match up with the front we'll put in some hairline that'll also define the back of the neck here just a little stop cut and then cut up to it stop cut cut up to it easy cuts nothing complicated 
Now at the end of this video, I wanna let you know, I'm not gonna do a painting section in this video, but I am gonna paint this gnome in another video that's gonna come out here probably about the same time. I've noticed that uh, it's a different audience that will enjoy the painting and versus everyone. So usually with a carving video about halfway through, people will stop watching if they don't wanna see the painting portion. So once we get to that portion, part of the audience just stops watching. So to have the videos perform a little better, I'm gonna separate that out. And so I'll link the painting of this particular gnome in another video at the end of this. So once we get done, you'll be able to go right to that video and watch the painting process of this guy. So you can see how I painted him and paint him the same way if you'd like to. All right, now with all those saw marks gone, we've lost where our arms are gonna go. So let's redraw those, right like so. We're gonna bring that into a pocket on his robe. So we do the same thing on the other side. Arm coming down and then in towards the pocket. We'll put a pocket right there. And these lines are rough guides, right? If your cut goes a little bit farther, we'll just make the pocket go a little bit deeper. If this if this trim gets cut a little bit wider, then maybe that trim is a little bit wider. Or you can thin it out with a knife. It's up to you. You can change the stuff that you're doing on your gnome versus what I'm doing. Keep that in mind that you've got options. All right. Okay, so we're gonna use this detail knife. And I'm going to go in pretty deep right here at a particular angle. I'm not going to go straight in from the side. I'm going to go kind of 45 degree from him, cut in nice and deep. You can see how deep that knife in, went in there. I'm defining that inside of the elbow. I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm not going to angle it so deeply. And see, I'm going to kind of straight out there so that uh, I bring that arm down to the pocket. And we're going to cut in like so, to pop that out. And that provides a little depth. So we're going to make it a little bit deeper. And with this, you can just keep making it deeper and then stop cut where you need to to bring those chips out. And put a little depth on the inside of that arm. And just keep working that in a little bit. Put a little depth in it. Check and look at it. How does it look? Do I want more? Do I need less? If you need less, you can't really go back and add wood. So only take out what you need. Same thing on the other side. Again. And then... Let less shear angle on this section. We're coming out to that pocket. Let me cut down to it. You can see I'm bringing that in a little bit further. I think that pocket's going to be a little bit further into the robe. So I cut past my line a little bit. That's okay. We can adjust this and make it work out pretty well because those lines aren't a, a, a half to cut here. They're a guide to help us stay where we want to. We can adjust in the fly. We don't have to redraw a line if we don't want to. I think it's gonna look a lot better if those pockets come further in. Take a look at that overlay right there. You can see what we're going for, what's gonna wind up looking like. This is gonna work out. We're just gonna bring the other side of the arm in a little bit further here, like that. The same thing on the other side, bring that in a little bit further there to find that arm coming closer in. And then we'll define the front of that pocket here. And we'd erase that portion that we don't need anymore. And then we'll put that front pocket right there. And that's gonna work out better. So we're gonna cut it out here and then we cut the sleeve out down to the robe because the sleeve, the, the arm sleeve is going into the pocket, right? The arm goes into the pocket so we cut the arm out towards the pocket to give it that depth and give it the illusion of an arm going into a pocket. Like so. We'll round out some of these corners while we're here too. Right there, because they don't need to be so hard anymore. And then we'll start working on the back of these arms here. We'll go ahead and draw them in first. And the same height as on the front. The line coming down here. And then we'll bring them in at that angle there. So we can start cleaning up that angle we left behind from when we originally roughed in the shoulders. And that'll be what we need. Now I'm going to take a, probably a V tool to define these lines a little bit. And uh, that'll work out pretty easy. And this V tool is just a number 12. It's a Swiss made file. I like those Swiss made tools. They are pretty good. Sharp, hold a blade edge well. Easy to sharpen. I like the, the bevel on them. And I'm just using this to define where those lines are gonna be, makes it easy then to stop cut and then cut up to them after I've defined those lines a bit. 
So we can bring that elbow up where we want it on this side. Same thing on the left shoulder here. Bring it up and look at the overlay if you need to to get a good idea of what we're doing here. And uh, making good progress. All right, we're going to define the inside edge of that shoulder more here, that left arm, and just put some depth to it. And flip this guy around. Do the same thing on the right arm. And uh, smooth out as you need to to bring it down. Those sharp lines, if you do, remove, remove whatever you have to. Round those corners off. Clean it up. Make it look... Uh, how you like, make it look pretty. A little pairing cut right there. It's hard to get that angle sometimes, you gotta figure out the right way to do it. The pairing cut works out real well for me often. Alrighty, it's starting to come along. That's not, do I need, I'm gonna do it a bit deeper here. So I'm gonna really get in there and then come in on the other side and do a sharp V cut with the tip then delayed. Pull that out of there to define that section there behind the right arm and they'll do the same thing on the left arm sharp deep cut a very sheer angle right real deep but thin kind of thing going on there just to put a little depth behind that shoulder that arm behind that elbow and that should take care of that arm all right now just uh clean up a little bit on this Right here, round that off a bit more as it comes down there. Look for areas as you, as you do the carving to see where you might need to correct things. Sometimes getting things in an odd, an odd angle helps you see better, more clearly, what it is you need to fix. All right, now we're going to start defining that bottom of the trim here. Just stop cuts and then cutting down to that trim. Stop cutting the trim and then cut down to it. And work your way all the way around and remember be careful the front we don't want to do this a little across the front of the carving because uh, we're gonna have that trim go straight up the front of the carving up and under the beard so we're just gonna carve this all the way around from the front left to the front right and to find that bond trim I like this to be a little bit thicker because we're gonna paint this probably uh, like a bronze metallic kind of color you know like it's shiny and fancy trim on this fella but you'll be able to see that in the painting video at any rate okay so we're just going to bring this around right here to the front and then uh, we'll bring that trim straight up the front of the robe up underneath the beard so right here we're going to go over a little bit and come straight down with that line to the trim right there and the same thing with the other side straight down to the trim right there now we can better define this corner and stop cut down to it. And same thing for the other corner. Find that corner right there and stop cut to it. And then we can cut along the length of this trim here. Provide some depth to that trim as we come down. And we'll do the same thing to the other side as well. Just putting some depth into that trim. Cut down and, and rotate the carving as you need to to find the right angle. I said it before, I'll say it probably a hundred times in these videos. Just to remind you that you can absolutely rotate. And you don't have to stay the same direction I am, the same orientation. You should be learning how to do that on your own and what to look for. So that you can do these carvings without my help or without my assistance. As you learn and move forward. Right? Okay. We got that trim defined. That's looking pretty good. Brush this guy off here. And uh, we'll get a little bit more over here. That's not quite as deep as I would want it. It's not that it takes you a moment of stopping and looking at something to realize, okay, I need to take off more here, more there. I need to change this and adjust where this line's laying. Let's just round off the edges of these trims. And then we're going to round off the edge of that trim all the way around the base there. We're going to have that come in and round off that top edge of it. We don't want it to be a hard edge. So we're going to do that as well here in a moment. He's looking pretty good though. Alrighty. So you can 
do this how you want to. But when it comes to rounding these edges off here, clean this up a little bit more real fast. All right. When it comes to rounding these edges off, you can come in from the side here and do it like so. Or you can come in straight from the top and come down to it like that. Either way you do it, it's fine. Just round that off. And then the robe above this, we're going to have to smooth out a little bit. because We're making a kind of deepish V cut here to get all this done, all this detail in. So we'll bring that robe in so it doesn't look like it's puffed out right above the trim. We'll smooth that out here in a little bit. Just uh, go ahead and move that top edge of that trim all the way around back to the front trim. And that'll look pretty good for us. Pretty nice right there. All right, and now we'll go back around here and we'll adjust the robe. You can see it's poking out there, right? Let's adjust that robe here, smoothing it out as it comes down towards the trim. And we're gonna find a lot of areas in the car we need to fix like this, like coming up to that elbow there. We'll fix that here. And uh, that's good for that side. Let's do the other side now. Cutting down to that trim, smoothing this out, having the robe lay a bit more flat, not being bunched out, which is how it looked after we cut those, that, that trim in. Yeah, and there's no problem with fixing things as you go. That's what you should be learning to do. That's what you should be developing that skill. Of looking at your car, carving with a critical eye and seeing where you can fix things, and what you need to fix, and then determining for yourself, yep, I'm gonna carve off a little bit more here on the back and I'm going to do a little bit more on the shoulder like this. Round those edges off, right? Round the edges off on this shoulder. I did one shoulder, might as well do the other one. I want it to be uniform, symmetrical mostly. And uh, take these corners here, round off. Look for things you can do on your carving the same way. Where can I smooth things out a little bit, make them look more realistic, right? We want to do the insides of these elbows as well. But to do those, we also want to add some little creases down here on the middle part of the elbows. We're going to do a V cut right here and right there. And that makes the, the elbows really come to life. So we're going to smooth out the inside of the other elbow. And we're going to do the same kind of little V cut thing going on in here. Two little V cuts. One a little bit under the crook of the elbow. One a little bit above it. And that will put a little life to those elbows. Like so. Get a little bit of that out of there. Get that brush. A stiff bristle brush for brushing your carving is absolutely one of those things that really help when you're carving. Okay, so he's looking pretty good. We got a little bit more work to do on defining the uh, hairline there. Smooth out the hat a bit more. See, you can see we start carving in one direction. I stop. I change direction. I realize it's going to cut too deep real quick because it's cutting into the grain and it's going to hold in real fast. So I just, I rotate the knife where I'm cutting with the grain rather than against the grain. It goes a lot easier, a lot smoother. Okay. All right, so we could draw the mustache, but before we get started on that, that nose is looking pretty stiff. So let's go ahead and round things out here. We didn't do that yet. We're rounding off this nose here in the nostrils, making it look more alive and not as hard carved, right? Do the same thing on these cheeks. Smooth those out, these nostrils. Just take a little bit of wood off, tiny little chips. And it's amazing the difference it can make. Just taking tiny little amounts off like this and rounding it, tiny little facets, and uh, you can really bring a carving to life. Okay, so now we're gonna draw this mustache on. Now, if you droop it down, you can make him look sad. If you curve it up, you can make him look happy. So we're gonna curve this mustache up a bit, make him look like he's a uh, Got a bit of a smirk on his face. And then we'll correct that real fast. Make that symmetrical. And then we'll carve this mustache out. And put a little bottom lip in there. And uh, he'll look like he's kind of smirking. Like he knows a secret that not all the other gnomes know. Put a little point right there. And we'll trace this out with a detail knife. That flex cut detail knife. Top line. Then bottom side of the mustache. We'll do the same thing on that side. Carving out the top line of it. 
take your time and then do the bottom line and just take your time getting it right following that line that you drew and connect it now we'll cut up to it and we'll stop cut where we need to to pop those things loose it's hard to stop cut to a curved line but you can do it with enough practice if you can't just go ahead and do close and then stop cut the rest of the stuff out as you can with straight flat cuts and you'll make some progress all right so we've got that bottom edge of that mustache defined we can get this top edge too right here between the mustache and the cheek well, he's looking pretty good we don't have a whole lot to do left here we're just going to keep smoothing some things out we're on the home stretch of this guy we're going to have him finished up here in a few minutes but same thing removing that top of the mustache here little v cuts to define where that mustache stops at a little draw in maybe bottom lip that we want to do let's get that brush though get this off he's looking pretty good is he he's looking all right okay so we're gonna define the bottom of that a little bit more now that lip you gotta come down like so and then we're gonna need a bottom section of it a little bit lower right through there we're gonna cut that out and then a deep v cut here along the top and along the other top and then we're going to chip that out kind of like a pyramid cut and it's going to pop out a little bit of wood there for the mouth have a little deep hole there not too deep maybe a quarter of an inch eighth of an inch maybe just enough to find a little detail around this lip we're carving we just came down to a you sixteenth know, of an inch or more and now we're just stop cutting up to it and then we're going to round that bottom edge of that lip out. And he'll have a funky little lip there. Open mouth a little bit. Like he's smirking. Like he knows a secret the other gnomes don't know. I'm just working on shaving that cheek down a little bit more. The cheek was a little bit too thick. Fixing that up. If you don't like something, fix it now. Don't be done with the carving without fixing it. Alrighty. So he's looking pretty good here. We need to uh, clean up more on this shoulder here where the hairline meets the shoulder. Define the base of that hair a little bit there as we go around a bit more. Get rid of that hard edge here on the side of that beard and line it up with the hair. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Get rid of that hard edge and lining it up with the hair. And define that corner here where the hair meets the shoulder so you can see a clear line between it and the rest and then we'll add some details to the beard a little bit some lines to separate things out and I think we'll probably call it done after that okay so I'm gonna put a nice curved line right here then I'm gonna V cut it out a little swooping cut here on the left side up to that point and then the right side we'll cut a little notch out of the base of it down here and then round those corners a bit with just that one cut it doesn't look great yet it looks like why is his beard split right there but when we put three or four more here along the base of the beard it'll start to come together and put a little life into the beard We'll do a little small one right there. We'll do a bigger one up here along the side. Cut off that corner of the line, and then cut off the other corner of the line. Just putting a little life into that beard. And then one more on this side here. And that's probably gonna be all we'll do. Those four cuts will add a lot of life into this beard, make it look more flowing i guess and that's looking pretty good i think we're going to call him done so i'm going to take him to the sink and uh, wash him up and then uh, i'll do a painting video but you'll see him now all painted up there we go 
So there's our gnome all finished up and painted. If you want to see the painting video, you can see those links on the screen probably here in a second. Um, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Those things really do help me out. So if this was any kind of benefit to you, if you enjoyed the video at all, please like the channel, comment, and subscribe. By all means, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it, folks. Thank you so much for staying with me. Watch another video. One of those videos right there on the screen right there. Watch those.